Hello traders and investors, welcome back to the Trend Trader channel. So today I want to talk uh, more to the new investors, the people who have just uh, started investing, who are still not uh, that familiar with investing, but also to talk to the people that have uh, limited capital to invest. So basically, I will use uh, my experience in the market uh, of how I've been doing investing over, I mean, ever since I started investing and also to look at how I could have done it uh, or if how I can do it if I were to redo it again. So just a, a bit uh, of a history of my trading or investing. I started investing um, in October 2015, but before I had an easy equities account, uh, in January 2015, I had an account with a Standard Bank Liberty. They are called uh, Stanlip. I used to buy unit trust uh, with them. So I just read a book, uh, Think and Grow Rich, and then later on I read uh, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, as most of you have <laughs> already done. So after reading Rich Dad, Poor Dad, I realized that, okay, now it's time to do something with the knowledge that I have to actually invest. I mean, you know, assets and liabilities. I wanted to have some assets so that I can grow my money and not just spend my money on everything that I was spending my money on. So I had that unit trust account from the beginning of 2015. That was in January. So around, okay, when I had that unit trust account, I used to check my portfolio every now and then, and there wasn't much action that was happening. So I wanted that action because you would see the prices uh, on other platforms like uh, on the internet or papers talking about different companies, but I only had like three unit trust. It was the property unit trust, um, financials unit trust, and the top food unit trust, if I recall well. No, it was resources, property, financials, and top food. So it was for different kinds of unit trust that I had with Stanley. So later on in that year, around September, um, Financial Mail published a special edition. So Financial Mail publishes um, their magazine every Thursday. And then at the last Thursday of the month, they will have like a special that will have like two magazines in one. So the other magazine was focusing on Purple Group. So that was the first time I came uh, or I was introduced to Purple Group. So they spoke about uh, GT247, uh, Easy Equities, and the asset management uh, that they have. I forgot the name of the asset management. So now I saw that, okay, there is a broker. Uh, most of the things, it was just simple uh, to understand, especially with uh, Easy Equities. They even had images of how you would place a trade or place an investment. Yeah. So... I applied uh, to open uh, an account with his equities. At that time, I didn't have a tax-free savings account. Uh, I don't remember when they were legislated, but 2015, they were now available. I think maybe they even started in 2015, because at the time, the limit was still uh, 30,000. So I opened an account with his equities. Obviously, I ticked the tax-free savings account as well. Then now I had my account. Now it was time to start investing. I didn't know a lot about uh, investing, how to pick shares and everything. And I did what most of the beginners are doing. I just go to the internet out of curiosity to look for cheap companies. I mean, by cheap, I mean stuff that is selling below uh, five rand or even one rand, not necessarily cheap in terms of being uh, undervalued. So there were many companies that were trading below five rand per share. So I wanted to buy some. And I mean, you know, if you look for penny stocks, as they are called, you will find a lot of information on the internet on what are penny stocks, how you can quickly double your money and everything. I mean, if you look at a stock that is trading at 50 cent and you want to buy as much as possible of that stock, you're thinking that, okay, if the stock can just go to one rand per share, then you would have doubled your money. And if it goes to two rand per share, you would have made a lot of money. So I, w I had that mentality. I picked some companies using that mentality. Obviously, uh, is equities at that time, they will talk about investing in companies that you love. So I did also pick some of the companies that I loved, except that around that time, 
the JSE was not performing well and a lot of those companies were just taking a hit from the market. Uh, one perfect example is MTN Group. I bought MTN Group around uh, October 2015 or so and just uh, days after I bought uh, MTN, there was the news coming from Nigeria saying that uh, something is happening on MTN in Nigeria. That hit the share price of MTN real hard. So the share price started falling. I think I got in while it was st still trading above uh, 250 rand per share. Then the share price just kept on getting cut, 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 cut. Well, I'm sure you're familiar with the buy the deep, buy more, buy when there's blood in the street and everything, all that kind of uh, thinking. So I had a similar thinking as well. I kept on buying a uh, MTN all the way down. The penny stocks on the other hand were still not doing uh, very well as I had uh, wished that they would perform. The share price had uh, doubled. Some of them were just sitting at let's just say 50 cent per share. They were not going anywhere. So yeah, that was the beginning of my investing. That's limitation number one. Lack of knowledge. Uh, I didn't know what I was doing. I mean, you have to open an account, you don't have to prove that you know what is investing. As long as you have all the proper documents and you say that you can afford to fund your account, most brokers will just open an account for you. So yeah, the problem that I had, number one, was the lack of knowledge. Then the other problem I had was lack of funds because I was already having debit orders for the unit trust with Stanley. I had limited capital that I could uh, put into my Easy Equities account. Remember, I want to buy all the companies that are available in Easy Equities, but I have like maybe let's just say 250 that I could afford to deposit to my account every month. So now you can imagine I put 250 rands there. I want to buy Purple Group because they own is equities. I want to buy MTN because I like it. I want to buy ShopRite. I want to buy some cheap stocks and everything. So now I'm thinning out my 250 rand. I'm spreading it across multiple investment. You'll find out that maybe now I'm putting dead rands on MTN. Luckily, is equities give us a fractional shares. So my dead rands get me something even though it's not a full share. So yeah, I wanted to diversify my limited capital of which it wasn't helping that much because it would take me like months to have one full share of a company and i had a lot of companies at some point i had over 20 companies i had invested in companies that are in the banking sector other financial sectors healthcare uh, telecommunications some utilities all the kinds of uh, sectors you can think of because i mean the whole thinking was I want to diversify my investment. So now, uh, if you have, let's say, a, a total portfolio of 2,500 and already covering close to 10 sectors, we have over 20 stocks, you can imagine that each stock has less than 200 rand uh, invested in it. So even if those companies, they had done well in terms of the share price appreciation, I wouldn't have reaped uh, great rewards because I had only invested limited capital. So that uh, the challenge, the second challenge that I have, a uh, lack of funds and want to diversify these uh, limited funds that I have. So now, if I were to go back and redo my investing uh, again from the beginning, this is how I will do it. Okay, fine. Uh, in this, because now I have a bit of an experience in the market, so now my limited knowledge will be sort of um, it won't be correct because now i'll be sp I'm, I'm speaking from a position where i know uh, a bit more about the market as opposed to somebody who's just uh, starting so that's the disclaimer that i'm making okay yeah so now let's say i start again i have uh, limited funds let's just say i can afford to deposit 500 rent uh, per month into my easy equities account then instead of buying all the companies that i love or that are cheap stock uh, that are all undervalued and all those kinds of things i will focus on buying an etf right now i'm talking about the easy equities uh, south african rent account not the tax-free account because yes you can buy the etfs in the tax-free account but it has its own uh, limitations you can only find uh, etfs there 
and not all ETFs uh, are available there. The ETFs have to meet some kind of a criteria. So I'm talking about the South African rent uh, account, not the tax-free account. Okay, so I will invest all the 500 into an ETF, right? Okay, why ETF? We know that ETFs are already diversified. Uh, some of the ETFs have low fees. Uh, some ETFs, they pay quarterly distributions. So in this case, I will use a general market ETF, a top 40 ETF, right? Okay, now with the knowledge that I have, I will compare the total expense ratio of the top 40 ETFs. The cheapest one at the moment is Citrix 40. I think it's less than 0.2%. And then there is one vest because Stanley, the ETF part of it now is known as uh, one vest, and there are many other ETF uh, issuers. So if you look at all the top 40 ETF providers and then you look at the total expense ratio, the one that is cheap at the moment is Citrix 40. So I will just invest uh, in Citrix 40, especially in the first uh, 12 months of my investing chain, just regularly put my money in there okay at this moment personally i'm bullish uh, on the jse uh, so depending on when you start your investing chain you can start in a bear market or you can just start in a flat market as the jse overall has been flat even though the resource center has done uh, remarkably well so i'll start with a general market etf in this case a top 40 etf a cheaper top 40 etf like satrix 40 just put my money in there every month for the first 12 months. This will allow me to grow my capital, to participate in the market. And then at the same time, when I'm not uh, investing, I will be learning how to pick stocks. I will be learning fundamental analysis, technical analysis, anything that I can use in order to make a decision when it comes to buying stocks. So that will be my first approach by a general market ETF right this thing has its limitation like i said the top 40 is based on market capitalization meaning that the companies are in the top 40 based on their size not uh, it is not based on their performance so there are some companies that are performing very well there are companies that are performing poorly but they are there so you're just getting um, a mixture of everything the good and the bad stocks but the upside is that every quarter you will be receiving uh, distributions and also the index has a positive bias meaning that at some point the poor performers in terms of size if the share price just keeps on getting hammered we expect the market capitalization of a certain company to drop a bit and then maybe at some point they will replace that um, stock with the stock that is performing better outside the top 40 then they will bring in that win so in the long run which is why a lot of people when they talk about investing they talk about long term right so long term works very well uh, in an index or in index investing because over the long run the good performers will stay there the bad performers will be replaced by other good performers so over a period whatever period that you pick up because i can't define what is long term for you over the period uh, the index is expected to perform better than individual stocks so after 12 months you would have made assuming that the chase is profitable for that particular year you would at least get the market return uh, in, according to the return of the jse top 40. then on the side i'll be learning how to pick stocks after 12 months i will go back look at the size of my portfolio in this case i used a 500 as an example so 5 by 12 i think that uh, 6000 uh, correct my math if it's incorrect but i think that is 6000 rent so ideally i would push it until i have 10000 rent in my portfolio just based on a single etf and then once it's 10000 then i can start to introduce uh, individual stocks look at uh, which stocks are more interested on uh, rather than just buying the general market okay now to fix the issue of getting average return on the market with the jse top 40 because now you know in this channel i do technical analysis i do pick uh, individual stocks using technical analysis i would do the same thing for the etfs not to say that i wouldn't buy uh, the jse top 40 
I will look for an ETF that has a potential to do better than the top 40. We have a video in this channel, the link is there, where I said that I was bullish uh, on the property sector and the financial sector. So from time to time, I will evaluate the different sectors that are available on the JSE. I will look at the set that is promising. This is a relative statement. It's very subjective. What is promising for me may not be promising for another person. Some people they will look for the best performers in the market. For instance, we know that the resources, they have really had a great run. So somebody could be looking at investing in a resource ETF. Somebody could be looking at a dividend aristocrat. They will be looking at an ETF that will pay them dividends. Somebody is more interested in the property sector, so they will go for a property ETF. So I will also be applying the principles of systematic trend following to pick an ETF that offers a, a low probability in terms of risk, but in theory, it has a high upside compared to the GSE top 40. In this case, like I said, I am bullish um, on the property sector and the financial sector. And I have a video there. You can check that video to see why I'm saying I'm bullish. In fact, I have two videos because I started seeing a lot of um, banks. And if you look, if you can get some data, if you are on Twitter, you can just look for, I think it's called Capital Sigma or Sigma Capital. They publish a lot of data every day. They have a nice chart that shows uh, the performance of the banks uh, in 2021 year to date. You will see that some of the banks have performed well. So that is how I would try to change the strategy a bit to pick uh, an ETF that is more likely to perform better than the general market. But there's nothing wrong with uh, picking the top foot because there you're just going to get uh, the return of the market. If the market goes uh, does well, you will get those uh, good result if the market for that particular year is sort of depressed or it has a negative result or negative return you will get a negative return so yeah that's it so in summer if you are a beginner you don't have a lot of knowledge it's better to buy one thing in this case an etf is already diversified it has a lot of companies it has a positive expectancy you are more likely to make money in the long run than to lose money and also instead of choosing a general market you can try to filter it down and look for the sector that is more likely to perform better than the other sectors so that is how i would do it if i were to redo it again invest in one etf or maybe one or two etfs but then again there's this thing uh, we know that etfs are diversified product and then now you buy a JSE Top 40 ETF, you buy an industrial ETF, you buy a property ETF, you buy a financial ETF. You look at the top 10 holdings of the sector ETFs, property, resources, uh, financials. It's some of them, some of the top 10 holdings. It's the same companies that are found in the JSE Top 40. So now if you buy more than two, three ETFs, what diversification are you doing? Because the product itself is already diversified. Are you not now concentrating your capital into certain individuals? We know in the top 40, Naspers and Process, they're still the biggest uh, companies there. I think in the top 40, we also have BHP, Billiton, we have uh, Standard Bank as uh, some of the top 10 companies. Then now if you go to the industrial ETF, you're probably going to find Naspers. It's still big there. Okay, Naspas is a diversified company itself, so you might find it in different sectors. You go to resources. The top foot already has growth point and some other property stocks. If you go to property ETF, you find growth point again. If you go to financials, we have Standard Bank in the JSE top 40, but you also have a Standard Bank in the financials. So now you have Standard Bank in different product. You have growth point in different product. You have Naspas in different product. So the question is, are you still diversified? So when you want to diversify, don't make the mistake of involuntarily over concentrating your portfolio to some companies while you are trying to diversify. That is why ideally I would prefer to invest in one or two ETFs. So that's it for today. I hope that this video will assist uh, beginner investors so that they can make informed decision they can look 
at the kind of knowledge that they have in hand to see if the knowledge do they think that it's enough for them to pick individual stocks or they'll be better off if they select one product that is already selected by <laughs> experts because those fund managers well depending on who you are i'm a scientist so i know way less about uh, finance and other stuff so i will never be an expert uh, an expert in finance but if there's somebody uh, who's a fund manager those people have more knowledge when it comes to investing than me so those people are experts i believe that uh, they can do much better job than me uh, and also the problem of limited capital just focus on one or two etfs so that you don't worry not today you see somebody praising brick or then you jump in the following day somebody's talking about ec10 somebody's talking about this yes the other downside is that with individual stocks some individual stocks will just outperform the market now you have to pick the companies that will perform so now uh, with limited capital you're just gonna choose maybe one or two perhaps uh, five companies you don't know which one will perform well you don't know which one um, won't perform well you can pick great performers you can pick uh, what is known as the dogs the poor performers so now the etf it saves you from yourself from, uh, from yourself from your lack of knowledge but it allows you to participate in the market I think now uh, that it is clear. So now uh, what you'll be giving up by selecting individual uh, ETF or just one ETF, you will miss all the thrill that when people they talk about uh, Brico, PPC, Acelometal and all the other com companies that have grown by over 100% since the beginning of this year. But again, you need to go back uh, why are you investing? What is your investing objective? Do you want the thrill or do you want to grow your capital so that in future you can probably receive passive income from it? Just understand why you're investing. Obviously, if you want fun, then you can join Reddit. You can go and trade stuff like uh, GameStop and AMC, everything that is getting pumped. But at the end of the day, you need to understand why you're investing what is the objective? What are you hoping to achieve by investing uh, in the stock market? So I think I've said a lot for today. Uh, thank you for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please uh, click the like button. If you haven't subscribed, I will appreciate it if you can subscribe. I will see you on the next video. Mm -hmm.